Good morning and welcome back to the Q&A session of today's show. We've been talking about the new firmware updates for your GH5, GH5S, and G9. Today is May 30th, 2018. These updates were released at 1 a.m. Like UTC, it was about 6 p.m. last night here on the, on the West Coast. And uh, we've just gone through all of those features, what they all mean, shown the ones that we could, and now we're ready for questions for the Qs and the As. So hopefully, we'll get some good questions in here and we can, uh, we can do my best to answer them. And let me take a quick look, see if there's anything over on the Facebook page. Um, if you're watching this on Facebook, you can get your questions in there. I am keeping an eye on that. Most people, of course, are here on YouTube. And if you're watching in Twitch, you can drop your comments there as well. All right, first up here, uh, just people saying hello, dear Switzerland, hello. Actually, there was a question. Oh, yeah, there's this question in the very beginning, uh, before the show even started. Red Reef Media asked, is the V-Log upgrade still recommended? Let, let me talk about that, because this is, I think that's a, that's a great question. So first of all, this is specific to the GH5. The GH5S has V-Log built into it, and the G9 it doesn't apply to. It's, it's not a V-Log capable camera. What a log profile is, very, I'm not going to go into super depth here, but what a log profile is, is it a very, very flat profile that your footage looks your shadows are really, really bright. Your highlights are really, really dim. When you look at the footage and you think, ew, that looks gross, it is meant to be graded. It is meant to be put into Final Cut or Premiere or DaVinci Resolve and have those colors adjusted, stretched out, and so on to make them look awesome, which is great. The advantage of shooting log is you get a little bit more dynamic range than you do when you're shooting not log. So if you're in a high dynamic range environment, you can get more of the scene into, into frame, if you will, at once. Um, I did an example of this when I did my GH5 training, which, oh my God, I totally forgot to bring up my slides on the last thing, so um, bravo on me, but let me just do that right now. Wow, I'm, uh, I am on top of things today. But uh, let's see here. Well, I'm gonna do it this way. We're gonna do it this way to start. We're gonna start with this one, uh, the value for value proposition. I really should have done this in the last show, which I know everybody watched. Um, if you felt like you learned something today, and I hope that you did, because there's a lot of information on there, we have what we call a value for value proposition here on this show. If you feel like you took value from the show, then consider giving some value back to the channel. And you can do that by going to photojoseph.com support. There's a lot of ways to do it. Patreon, PayPal, shop at the affiliate store, watch my training on lynda.com, or hire me directly. And one of the other things you can do is download the GH5 training. So GH5 training at gh5training.com. It is a complete five and a half hour long course of the GH5. So if you're using that camera and you have not got this course, you, you really, you want to. You should get that course, gh5training.com. It's kind of awesome. There's a ton and ton of information there. And in that course, to come full circle, I did a demo of Log where I had a, a really good scene for this. It was a very, very high dynamic range scene where I was, um, it was a full noon Sunday, um, sunny day, and outside of the camera, pointing it at a building, a restaurant that had the door open, and you could see inside the restaurant, and it was really dark inside the restaurant. And then you had the bright sun, full sun hitting the sidewalk. So your sidewalk is gray. It's like super brilliant bright. And when I shot the scene in a standard profile, there was no way to get detail in the shadows and in the highlights in the same frame. And I had to adjust exposure up or down to be able to see the shadows or the highlights. Shooting log, you could get everything into a single frame, but you do have to bring it into your software to expand that out so that you can actually see everything. But the data is there where it wouldn't be in the non-log profile. So that is what log does, and that is why log is still absolutely useful. I love shooting in log. I shoot almost everything log now. It's just one of those things where once you get used to it, you're going, well, why would I shoot another way and lose? Yes, you have to do more work because you have to grade every shot in post, but I'm going to do that anyway. So uh, yeah, I'm all for it. I'm, I'm a big proponent of shooting log, absolutely. So that was a very long answer to a supposedly simple question. A uh, little camera film says, a little off topic, did you know that you can get false color on the GH5 and GH5S? I've heard that through some kind of a hack, I think, right? But I, that's nothing I've ever seen before, and I don't really like hacking my cameras. But um, if it's not a hack and it's just a hidden feature, let me know. But I think that's some kind of a weird little hacky thing. Omar Carrillo, hello, says, one question for the Q&A. I have a 12-millimeter 2.0 rocket on lens, okay, 25-millimeter Lumix, and you're looking for a 42.5. Great. I saw the Olympus, but I don't know if the IS from Olympus works on my G7. I don't know. You would have to try it. Um, in general, they do work. The stabilization works, but just not as well. And now the G7 is an older camera that doesn't have the dual in body stabilization that you get on the GH5 and some of the other newer bodies, but uh, it, sh it probably will work, but just not as well as it, w if, as if it were a native 
Panasonic lens. Uh, I can't confirm that. That is my understanding and partial understanding, partial assumption. You're going to have to try it out. So the best thing you do is go into the store, slap it on there, and give it a try. Or if that's not available, you can try renting it. You know, borrowlenses.com, lensrentals.com, Sammy's Camera, b and I think does rent. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they do rentals. You can, if you can rent it, it's a great way to give it a try. Um, that's about all I can tell you. Um, if you're looking at the 42.5, though, remember there are two 42.5s from Panasonic. There is the, is this it right here? Oops. Um, yeah, this is right here. This is the F1.7. Is that what this thing is? Uh, yeah, F1.7. That's the F1.7 one. Very inexpensive, very affordable lens, tiny. This is a really nice little lens. And then you've got the Noctocron, which is not inexpensive and not tiny, but so, so, so gorgeous. Worth every stinking penny. That is a beautiful, beautiful lens, if you're going to use it. If you're not going to use it for its intended purpose, then, you know, don't bother. But if you're doing portraits, doing weddings, you'll want that lens. Okay, next up here, uh, greetings in Latvia, hello. Rich Mazza says, I tried to update this morning. Okay, f uh, downloaded the update, put it on the card, and GH5 hit play and nothing, just the videos on my card. Okay, so um, in the beginning of last video, I walked through a process of how to do the update. Two things that you wanna do, reformat your card first before starting the update. And second, make sure that you're copying the bin file, the .bin file, and not something that you've further uncompressed. If you double click on that .bin, it turns into like a CG, ZB, ZGB, something or other. Um, you can do that. Um, over on, <laughs> over on uh, Twitch, someone called name, I can't even see that, I'm gonna make this bigger. Name is, what does it say? Uh, there we go. Name is John S. is asking, is this live? I'm confused. Why, yes, it is live. You do not need to be confused. All right, um, but if you're watching this not at 10, 15 a.m. Pacific time on the 30th, then no, it's not live. All right, uh, let's see here, next up. Uh, Mark says, update worked perfectly for me, no problem at all, excellent, glad to hear it. And then people talking about that, talking about that, ooh, a whole bunch of chat chat again. I'm not gonna try and find questions in here, so if you have, if it doesn't have my name in front of it, so if you, if you put Photo Joseph in front of it, I will see it. If you posted a question earlier and you didn't put Photo Joseph in, Copy and paste your question back in with my name in front of it. That way I will see it. Burns Tech, your little one is adorable. Thank you. I think he's cute too. Martin Pitt, Fuji have been sending a lot of updates out. Okay, good. So I had asked the question in the last show, um, and it's a legit question. I'm not trying to poke fun at anybody because I just literally don't know. Are other camera manufacturers doing updates anywhere near as often and as generously as the Panasonic updates are? Um, you're saying that Fuji's been sending lot, lots of updates out, so that's awesome. Uh, Burns says, I ditched my Nikon due to lack of updates, but mainly for video recording limitations. Panny definitely has impressed me with the frequency of updates. Awesome. Love to hear that. Yeah, that's, there's been some significant updates to the GH5. If you bought the GH5 a couple years ago and you're working with it now, it's like it's incredible how much has been added to this camera. Uh, this week in photo. Hello, sir. Good job, me. That's me. Um, this stream has saved me a ton of time. Excellent. Thank you, Frederick. Burns Tech, I think they also updated the battery indicator to four bars instead of three. Yep, you got it. Obviously, that came up before I actually got to that function. Um, oop, did I? I just flew off screen here. Where'd it go? Um, oh, boy. Here we go. Uh, okay, there we go. There we go. It's the, the, my chat system tends to just go wee, fly off screen sometimes. MG Dickens says, why can't, the add, why can't they add high-res mode to the GH5? That's an interesting question. I don't know if it can or can't. It, I, I don't know. It has the ability to shift the sensor, obviously. Um, but there might be some other additional processing hardware that is in the G9 that's not in the GH5 specifically to handle it. I don't know, and no one has told me that it could or couldn't, so I have no official response to it other than to say, I don't know. Sorry. Olu Kings, did anyone notice the color improvements with the GH5? Oh, interesting. You're seeing color improvements? Hmm. Interesting. Tell us more. Primal Focus, we want crop marks. You mean like uh, whether you're shooting two to one ratio or other, that's that's in the GH5. That was added in there a long time ago. Um, Primal Focus Films, if you're still watching, clarify what you mean by crop marks. I don't want to spend five minutes digging around to find it if that's not what you mean. But if you're talking about lines on the screen to indicate the um, the aspect ratio of filming when you're shooting in non or shooting for a non 16 by nine output, if that's what you mean and you don't know where it is, it is there. If you're talking about something else, well, let me know, clarify the question, and I will try to answer it. AMG Amateur Media Group says, "How much better is autofocus? If at all, is all I want to know about really." Well, it is better. That is that is one of the major updates in this. Um, one of the major reasons that is better is the 179 degree shutter fix has been applied to the 180 degree shutter level. So it basically applies now when you're shooting normal video. So that is awesome. Um, I have not done a side by side. I will do that later. Update just came out last night, but I can tell you for a fact that when shooting at 179 degree versus 180 prior to the update, it was better. So there you go. 
Mm -hmm. RT76, question, do I need to set up the camera to angle slash ISO, or does the, does this, does the better autofocus work in seconds in ISO? I think, I think it still works better. I think it works the same, which is to say that it worked better than it did at 180 degree. I, I, th I don't think you have to go to seconds in ISO to gain the speed. I think you already had the speed, I think. I could be wrong, though. Which would be interesting if I was wrong that they wouldn't have called out adding it to the um, shutter speed versus shutter angle. But, um, but honestly, if you're shooting video seriously, put it into, sh into shutter angle. It's just a better way to go. Um, and if you don't know why, watch the video. We'll link to it again up here, the video that talks about the shutter angle versus shutter speed. It's, it's a great way to work. Okay, Charles Rare. I missed what you said about the autofocus improvements. What improvements did you notice on autofocus with the GH5S? And do you think this will enable better autofocus use on a gimbal? Oh, that's interesting. Uh, okay, so the, the specific autofocus improvements were autofocus tracking improvement for the GH5S. And then there was a general... Oh, no, sorry, I take that back. Autofocus tracking improvement was added to the GH5 and G9, not to the GH5S, which indicates to me that there, there had already been reports of slightly better autofocus on the GH5S than the other cameras, like very marginal. And whatever that was, I believe, I can't, this is not confirmed, this is what I understand it, I believe that that has now been added to the other two cameras. Uh, so that's a little, it's a very minor improvement, but that's a minor improvement. The 180 degree shutter angle thing only applies to the GH5 and GH5S because the GH9 does not shoot in shutter angle. And uh, that is a dramatic improvement. Now, whether that's going to make it better while shooting on a gimbal or not, I don't think that's really relevant, whether you're hand holding it or it's on a gimbal. Um, it's better, better is better. So that's, that's about all I can tell you there. Charles Rare, I'm, oh, that's what I just read. Uh, Burns Tech, you should do a pre-recorded value for value tease and end it right into your videos on the upload. Yeah, you're right, because I do actually have, I could, you'll, thank you, I'll do that. Um, little Camera Films, it is a LUT that you can toggle on and off with the Vlog View Assist. It, um, what's a LUT? Were we talking about the adding the, you got to put your questions into context. Sorry, guys, because I'm not reading the questions in real time. So you got to put them in context for me. Um, if you're talking about the LUT and the VLOG view, if, yeah, we talked about that. I don't know what you mean. Sorry. If, if you're asking something that I have not fully addressed, repost the question, please. Bruce Williams. Uh, there goes the screen again. Um, where was it? I didn't go that far. There we go. Bruce Williams. About to do the update, but the byte size is different than what it says. I should have the file I downloaded, 68, blah, 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 blah. Should be 67. Uh, I... I don't know. I would I would download it again just to be sure. But if you've got a .bin file, it's a .bin file. I don't know why they put the byte size on there like that, but I guess you can really compare it. But um, I think you're fine. Just download it again, see if you get the same file size. Maybe use a different browser. But if you're getting a .bin, drop it on there. If it's not complete, it's just not going to work. Um, okay. Lael Lyle says, question, Zihun Crane 2, okay, says they are not Able to pull focus because of the GH5 software does not support it. DJI Ronin S not released, says they are able. Did you read any news? I have not. I don't know anything about that. Sorry. Um, we are cinema says, which lens do you would you choose to photograph a wedding on a GH5 and a second Lumix body? Oh boy. Need a lot of wedding, need a lot of lenses to shoot a wedding. Um are you shooting video or stills. <laughs> okay, number one portrait lens. Number one wedding photographer lens, the Noctocron 42.5 f 1.2, super shallow depth of field, portrait lens, beautiful. If you're talking about shooting wide scenes, I really like the 8 to 18. Where is it? Um, I really like the 8 to 18. I've been using this a lot. It's quite wide, but if you're shooting you know, in a big cathedral, you want to get the whole wide room, that would be a great lens for that. Um, just watch for a little distortion around the edges. You don't want your bride standing at the edge of the scene because you will get some distortion there. So uh, keep her out of the edge and you'll be good. But uh, otherwise, I'm not a wedding photographer, so I don't. I can't say you know. Oh, this is the one that I always use because I don't. But I, I generally, I'll say this. In general, I prefer to shoot with primes. But a wedding is so dynamic and stuff is moving around so quickly that I probably would opt to shoot zooms for just the majority of kind of the, the ceremony itself or whatever. Running around getting pictures of people probably would opt to shoot a zoom just for the flexibility. Um, but. Yeah, you're going to have to talk to a wedding photographer. Sorry, I can't really, beyond that, I can't really recommend. Um, all right, Gabe Quello says, hey, I'm a little late on here, but I wanted to ask where or how to go about updating my G9, and if it is even worth it. Well, you can watch the entire video we just recorded. In the beginning of that, we talk about where to go. I'll give you a, t a hint, though, photojoseph.com slash Lumix update. It will take you to that page, and you can download it. And yes, it is absolutely worth it. 
Um, David says, no questions, just want to come back here. It just makes me happy when that flies off screen. Just want to say thanks for making this episode. You're quite welcome. Um, Terry D. Oh, and so I'm starting to see things that aren't supposed to be questions. Remember, if you want a question, put photo Joseph in front of it, but I am going to answer this because I see it. Can you go over the 20X manual focus feature I have upgraded, but don't see the option on my G9? So all it means is when you're manually focusing, so you put your camera on. I disabled manual focus on here, but anyway, when you're in manual focus mode and you've focused, you push the the. Here we go. Let me let's do this. You push stabilize this. Where to go? Um, this button right here. That little guy there. See that one? There we go. That little one. It's FN3. Push FN3, and it will zoom in, punch into the frame, and then you can use the command dial to zoom closer and closer, and you can go all the way up to 20x zoom. The whole point of that is for critical manual focus when something is farther away or you just, you know, you want to make sure it's on the eyelash and not the eyeball or whatever it might be. Um, critical, critical manual focus. That's what it's for. So now you can go to 20x. So that's all it is. Push that button and then rock the dial and it will zoom in farther than it did before the update. Hmm. Uh, Richard Bernstein says, does the battery, does the video file get corrupted when the battery dies? That's a very good question. No, the camera will go through a proper shutdown process when the battery dies. Um, at least that's what it's supposed to do. I can't say that I've ever actually let it battery go completely dead on me like that, but that is what it should do. Um, if you're not seeing that, let me know, but that is what it should do. Proximity. I can't, I can't decide between the G9 and the GH5. Okay. Any crucial hints that will make the decision easier? I mostly do travel photography, portraits, landscapes, and travel vlogs. Probably the G9 for you. However, I'm going to re recommend that you watch a video that I did a while ago. We'll link to it right up here. That was the GH9 versus the GH G9 versus the GH5, and I went into all the differences. Um, put up slides just like I did today, comparing feature to feature, so you can really see what those differences are. And hopefully, um, that will answer your question better than I can in just five seconds here. But from what you said there, probably the G9. But check it out. Birai uh, Duta, which is the best flash for the GH5? Well, there's only a couple from Panasonic, but Godox is making some now that have wireless functions and full TTL. I have not used any of them, but I've heard really good things. So I'm going to say the Panasonic, we know they work because they're from Panasonic, um, but do look at the Godox lights for sure. Lural, 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 Lural H says, will you have a review on cages, monitors, and on board lights? I don't know what a board light is, but um, review on cages. I've... I have a cage. I have this small, small, small rig, small cage, small something, I forget, it's somewhere, um, which I really like. Um, I'm not going to go out and buy a bunch of other ones to compare them. I like that one. It works. Small small rig. Darn it. Now I'm going to grab it because I don't remember what it's called. Um, I really do like this one. I think it's very, very nicely designed. Um, uh, small, small rig. Uh, this is for the GH5. It's formed perfectly for the GH5. You can add on handles and this will hold my, my um, Atomos monitor on there. It's, I like it. I like this thing a lot. Um, as far as monitors, again, I own several of uh, the Atomos recorders, monitors slash recorders, because I use them to do things like 10-bit, 60p, uh, you know, Ultra HD, Vlog type footage. Um, so that's awesome. If you're looking for just the screen, I know the, was it small, small HD, is that right? It makes little monitors that are very, very nice, but... Um, other than that, no, I'm, I'm probably not going to do a bunch of like side-by-sides. It's just not, kind of not my thing. Um, all right. And board lights. I don't know what you meant by that. Sorry. A little camera films. The false color is a LUT that you can load into the camera. Ah, okay. You can get a false color LUT. Very cool. So that's how you get the false color on screen. Neat. Okay. That makes sense. Um, if you don't know what false color is, Google it. Uh, primal focus films. I have seen the crop marks, but they're impossible to see while filming. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Well, uh, I don't know. I guess you can provide feedback that they need to be more prominent. Um, I don't honestly use them, but um, but I know they are there. Sorry, you're having a hard time seeing them. Uh, Bruce, yay, Lael. Oops, sorry, bring the comments back up. Here we go. Um, Lael, let's come back here. Lael Lily, thank you. You're welcome. Bernstein, Archie76 says, can you make or have you made a video about your live video switching hardware, which you're controlling with the tablet? I have. I will link to that right here. I did a short version of the show, and by short it means like 45 minutes, overviewing the whole thing. And before that, I did a five-day long video. It's a lot. This system is robust. There's a lot that goes into it. But yes, we'll link to the uh, the short version of the video. It's um, all I'll tell you right now is all this is is a remote control. It's just a remote control. That's all that is. Okay. Um, 
Uh, Brigio says, thank you so much for this episode. You're quite welcome. It's making this firmware update special. Excellent. Thank you. Rich Matza says, I can confirm the GH5 closes the file and battery dies. Oh, thank you, Rich, very much for sharing that. Awesome. Very, very good to hear. Taz Tech says, hello. If I haven't downloaded any of the previous updates, will I be fine to just download the new update? Yes. All updates will be included. Yes. You do not need to step your way through the updates. Just grab the latest one, pop it on there, and away you go. And if you haven't updated for a while, you're going to be blown away. There's so much new in the cameras now. SRO Digital, is there a website you can go to or email address you can use to submit functional improvement suggestions to Panasonic Lumix? <sighs> Did, I think I got a, um, an address once. Let me, let me see if I can find that real quick. Because um, it's, the short answer is there's not an easy one. Because it's not, Panasonic's not that big, right? I mean, I mean well, the Lumix division is not that big. Uh, nothing like, um, you know, Canon, Nikon, whatever, they go much, much bigger departments. So they have teams of people to handle this sort of thing. But, no, that's a different email. That was for something else. Uh, no, I don't. You know, posting them, I'll tell you this. If you post them on the forums, um, if you go into, like, you know, M43 Rumors or 43 Rumors, yeah, 43 Rumors and some of the other really big Micro Four Thirds sites, Panasonic does read those. They will probably not respond because, you know, that's just opening a door that they don't want to open. But, if you post things in there, um, and especially if there's chatter about it, they will read it. They will see it. You can also tell me, and if I, you know, think it's something worth sharing, I'll share it. Um, you got to understand. Even when I make feature suggestions, feature requests, it goes through a series of filters before it makes it to an engineer. I don't. It's not like I pick up the phone, call an engineer, and said, "Hey, dude, you should add this feature in." Um, I'll tell somebody, and if they think it's worthy of passing along, they'll pass it along. And if they think it's worthy, it goes through levels. So, um, things, seeing things like the microphone. Uh, microphone on off, the microphone visible, what do you call it? Feedback, whatever it's called. Microphone display, microphone levels display, toggling that on and off via a function button. I know that's something that I requested. Uh, now, 500 other people might have requested it. Nobody might have requested it, but somebody thought it was a good idea. Don't know, but I thought it was a good idea, so I requested it. A year later, it shows up. You just don't know. But that's, that's about all I got. There is no, like, this is the email address to send things to. I'm sorry. Okay. Ah. <sighs> Next up here is, where are we? Here we go. Gabe says, any new prime lenses coming out that you could share with us or give us a hint on? Well, no. That's not, that's not how it works. If I knew something that I wasn't supposed to tell you that I couldn't tell you. Um, I know there is a new zoom lens coming. I think that's pretty public, but I'm not going to say anything just in case it's not public. I think it's public, but I'm not going to say anything. I tend, see, I hear, I learn, I, I get a lot of info, and it's hard to me to keep track sometimes of what's supposed to be public and what isn't. So I err on the side of, I don't know. Um, and I'm going to leave it at that. Skylight Productions, the video corruption occurs with some third-party batteries when they die. Oh. Instead of powering down the GH5, it simply blanks out, so it'd be wise to test if using third-party batteries. Very interesting, Skylight Productions. Thank you for sharing that. I would say when it comes to batteries, please buy OEM batteries. Original equipment manufacturer, that means Panasonic batteries. Please buy Panasonic batteries. If you're shooting Canon, buy Canon batteries. Shooting Nikon, buy Nikon batteries. Batteries are too risky. And if you think, oh, what's the risk? Remember the whole thing with Samsung and the phones blowing up? And you can, battery tech is not, like, it's not just a simple thing, right? Battery tech is kind of high tech. And I would really, really recommend using only OEM batteries, discourage using third-party batteries. Chargers, different. You can get uh, third-party chargers. You can get third-party AC adapters. Um, but the batteries themselves, even the chargers, you, it's probably like middle road. You probably kind of probably should go more with Panasonic chargers. Um, but I think you're okay without. But the AC adapters, you know, I buy those things on the cheap all the time because I like having AC adapters for my cameras. But batteries, just just spend the money, buy real batteries. Mm, yeah, that's that's my that's my advice. Biraj Dutta says autofocus does not seem to work as good in Cinema 4K as in other modes. Um, I don't know. I cannot comment on that. I actually never shoot in C4K ever. So sorry, can't help you there. Test Tech, awesome. Thank you very much. Why well, you're welcome. Thank you very much. And. That is it. And Ryan is having an issue. Ryan, what's going on over there? Oh, apparently my, my computer in there restarted. Well, that's okay. We're, we're almost done with the show. Um, not going to worry about it. Okay. Let's see here. Any comments coming up in, uh, in oh, what is this thing called? Facebook. No, nothing else in Facebook. All right, good. Nothing else in there. Nothing else over in, um, in Twitch. And last Last question. We're going to hit this as the last one. The last two. Serge says, speaking of third-party batteries, one of those got my camera into a cyclic shutter opens closes mode and I had to pull it out to get it out. Yikes. 
Um, Sir says, I can see that killing the shutter if left unattended. Oh, yeah, man. Ooh, that'd be bad. <laughs> yeah, you don't want that. Um, Richard says, do you know the space limit for SD cards? I'm not sure what you mean by the space. Like how big they can get? I think one, 128 or are there 256s out? I, I don't know. I know that to get the highest speed cards, the highest speed cards are not necessarily the highest capacity cards. Um, but other than that, I couldn't really tell you. Uh, okay. Whew. What is the most, all right, last question. <laughs> what is the most solid SD card for the j I'm going to take it off screen so that I can have an excuse to end the show. Um, what is the most solid SD card for the GH5? I had a Lexar 1000X Pro fail. Okay, let me say this about memory cards. Any card can fail, right? I, I could say this brand is awesome, this brand sucks, but even the brands that are the best, you can still have failures. There is no guarantee. As like with any tech, right? Any piece of tech can fail. So no matter how much money you spend on a card, it potentially could fail. Now, the likelihood of a really good quality card versus a really not so good quality card failing, obviously, much lower likelihood of the high-end card failing. So with that said, Lexar has always been a good brand. Lexar is no longer making cards, although they've got a whole kind of weird, like they're kind of coming back. I'm not even sure what the heck's going on there. Um, Pro grade are the cards that some executives from Lexar stepped out to go create. They're creating just high-end cards, not doing consumer tech at all. They're just doing the high-end stuff. Um, We actually did an interview with Jeff Cable, former Lexar executive, uh, photographer, friend of mine, We'll link to that up here. We talked a little bit about the ProGrade cards in there, so worth checking that out. And then, of course, the AngelBird cards. Uh, those are the ones that I've been recommending for video use specifically. They've got the V90 and V60 ratings on them. Um, one of the few cards on the market that have the V rating. And incidentally, if you don't know what the V rating is, um, okay, that's another video to link to. We'll link to that one up here as well. We did a video a while ago explaining all the numbers on the cards, what they mean, um, including the V rating and why it matters. So I'm going to make you go watch that to, to fully understand it. But if you're doing high-end video work on your GH5 or GH5S, you want a card with a V rating. V60 is the minimum. Just get the V90, future-proof yourself, make sure that you're totally set and solid and good to go. Um, and there you go. That is where I'm going to leave it. That whew, was a long show. All right. I haven't had any water this whole time. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. I hope that was informational, informative, and helpful. Um, I'm just gonna I'm gonna throw this up here one more time and say, hey, don't forget, if you uh, learned something today, consider the value for value proposition heading over to photojoseph.com slash support and giving out a little help in hand there. You can do that via PayPal or Patreon or shopping in the affiliate store, watching my training on lynda.com, or even hiring me directly if you need to. And that, my friends, is all there is to it. We're going to wrap the show up there today. Um, I am probably going to do a show tomorrow, Thursday. Uh, not Friday because I'm going to be out of town. But I want to squeeze in two this week because Monday was a holiday. So I'll probably see you guys tomorrow. All right. Take care of yourselves. See you next time. Bye-bye.